well, it finally released. But is it what we were hoping for? Let's have a look. So first off, let's get a tiny bit of context. Sometime last year, Epic Games announced Unreal Engine 5 as the successor to Unreal 4, and it promised some absolutely wild and incredible revolutions to the way that we create content. The two big ones, in my opinion, were Lumen, which is more or less stable runtime global illumination, and my absolute favorite, Nanite, a new way of processing billions of polygons of geometry. And unsurprisingly, a lot of the industry was talking about things that this might allow video game developers and other types of content creators to make. In the years since, we've seen some really awesome prototypes using Unreal 5 and some absolutely incredible imagery. But now we get two things at once. We get Unreal 5 releasing out of preview into a full release capable of shipping commercial games. That's fantastic. And exactly what that contains will become clearer over time. But the other big thing that we get is a high-end showcase demo of what is possible with Unreal 5. And that's this uh, matrix city here. And this kind of answers part of the question that a lot of the industry has been asking itself over the last year or so. And that is how will tools like Unreal Engine 5 change the way we design and author content? Now that's a big question because you can use different kinds of tools in so many different ways. For example, small teams with only a few people will use Unreal Engine in a relatively different way to the way that big teams might use it. And you can expect different kinds of outputs based on the number of hours you can put into a project. So I think this matrix city kind of answers the slightly higher end of the question, which is when you've got a relatively large team who have the ability to do things like build custom tools and pipelines, what can you make? And I mean, just look at it. It's firstly, massive. And secondly, really, really high fidelity. They put a tremendous amount of detail into these buildings, given the city size. Now, some of them are mega scans, sure, but a lot of them aren't. They gave a talk as well yesterday about how they authored these assets in a modular way and then used Houdini to procedurally generate cities out of them. Now, there are millions of different components to make up this city. I think it was somewhere around 8 million, if I'm recalling from memory. Now, even for a big team with a lot of artists, that is probably too many assets to reasonably expect to place. So they had to basically automate the entire process to procedurally generate buildings and then dynamically load them into Unreal. And it's fantastic to see, firstly, Unreal Engine capable of working with this kind of workflow. And secondly, incredible to see what big scale teams who have a real focus on building tools can make. So that makes Unreal Engine a candidate for AAA games, for Hollywood projects, and other use cases that will probably evolve over the next couple of years. I think a big one will be something like ad production. This will be a really fast way to get great visuals. But for me, this only partly answers the question of how will artists use Unreal Engine 5. This is a great example of what bigger teams can do. And yeah, sure, these kinds of tools allow a single artist to do way more than they possibly could. But the way this project is structured still requires a relatively diverse and complicated team. One of the things Unreal's always been really great for, especially Unreal 4, is allowing smaller teams to do a lot more. So let's have a look at their other piece of sample content they've just put out, uh, a shooter called Lyra. It's a little bit smaller in scope, but I think it should also be a really great illustrator of Unreal Engine 5's ability to get fast results. So here we are in Lyra. This is the new multiplayer content sample that's being given out as part of Unreal 5's release. And on first impressions, I think it's really, really cool. As far as I understand, it's a lot more complicated than even, for example, the old shooter project that Unreal 4 had as a multiplayer shooter demo. It's meant to have a lot of the latest features under the hood, things like, for example, gameplay abilities. And for me, it showcases one or two really, really cool things. The first is the environment. It's Fairly simple in terms of how it's set out. It's lots of nice clean surfaces and simple lines. And a lot of the geometry, I believe, is made inside Unreal Engine, which is awesome. For small teams who just want to really quickly iterate content, I think that's going to be a fantastic way to improve blocking out or even shippable content because you can now bake down things into static meshes. On my machine, it also ran super well, so I think it's a really good showcase of what Lumen will be able to do when you're not dealing with you know, something the size of a city. I'm looking forward to digging more under the hood in this project to see how it's really built. But from the environment art point of view, I think it's really cool. It showcases using Unreal Engine 5 to build nicely contained levels. This is great because it means you don't just have to be wanting to build great big 
open worlds, you can also build smaller projects. And a lot of the advantages are just the same. It runs well, it's lit nicely, it, it's great. So now finally I'd like to quickly just touch on the kind of things that I really want to see from Unreal Engine in the next couple of years. Now obviously if you've watched my channel at any point you know that I'm massively into virtual reality. It's kind of mostly where I deploy content that I make. And as far as I can tell, uh, Nanite still doesn't support uh, virtual reality. Which is a shame, but I also understand in terms of firstly building the engine so it's stable and then working on deploying out to other features, I can see their priorities. Uh, I just hope that at some point soon they'll be able to put some time into updating the way that Unreal handles and works with virtual reality. I still do think that it is the best mainstream software to build virtual reality with. I mean, there are loads of fantastic options. Unity is really good and Valve have been doing some amazing things with their source engine. But Unreal's fantastic as well. Visually, it's beautiful, and the engine, even Unreal 4, has been a pleasure to work with. So, I think long term, Nanite could be a key to some serious next-gen virtual reality for bigger and more immersive experiences. And I can't wait. So now, that's it. Unreal Engine's out. So what comes next? Well, it's going to get adopted over the next few years, I would assume. I think a lot of studios are going to be asking themselves how they're going to work with Unreal Engine 5 if they haven't already started. Now within the industry, I think a lot of different specialities within game development or real time have already started playing with tools like Unreal 5 and asking how their workflow might change. The team that I'm part of is already super excited to move to Unreal 5 and I think we're definitely going to do it. We're just going to be measured about how we do it, it's not going to be immediate to make sure that everything we've already built will run on the new platform. And long term, we are really, really excited about the possibility to build huge, great, big, dynamic open worlds for virtual reality, for flat screen, for mobile, for PC, and anything beyond using this kind of tech. This is only Unreal Engine 5's first release. And if you look back at Unreal Engine 4.0 and compare it to 4.27 or some of the latest, it is almost a completely different piece of software. The capabilities have really, really come along. So over the next few years, if Epic Games' previous actions are anything to be taken as a best guess for what they'll do next, Unreal 5 has a lot of features that will still release over the next few years and a lot of awesome improvements that we can all look forward to. And that's really it. So the final thing that I'll say is, if you are looking at all of this amazing tech and you've never used it before, I recommend downloading it, having a play around and learning. There's so much great content out there to get you started to learn about building worlds and then depending on the area that you're interested in, whether it's the engineering or programming side, whether it's the environment art side, there is so much great content, both free and through training programs that can help you to really learn how it all works. And if you're a studio that's maybe using Unreal 4 or another engine, I mean, it's up to you whether or not you want to use Unreal 5. That is a technical and logistical question, right? I think we're all going to spend the next few weeks really digging into how this software properly works. But at the moment, it just looks fantastic. And I'm super, super excited to keep playing with it and seeing what else I can make. I've already got some awesome ideas for cities and buildings and all the rest that I can't wait to find the time to experiment with. So that's it. Unreal Engine 5 is out. Now, is it what we were all hoping for? I can't answer that for you, but it's pretty much what I was hoping for in everything except the virtual reality. And I understand that when it comes time to really focusing on projects, you've got to order things. So I'm sure the VR support will come down the road. I trust Epic. And then beyond that, is it what I was expecting? Yeah, an awesome, really fun to use, really capable piece of software. I think there's a lot of technical questions still to dig into, but it's great. I think this is potentially game changing and I can't wait to play with it more. And now time to get back to work. It's been a few weeks no, it's been longer than that actually, it's been a few months in fact since I last posted the video and it's not for lack of wanting to. I've got a few in the pipeline that I just need to finish off that cover a few different topics around world building and thinking about space in the future that I can't wait to share with you. But in the meantime, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it and I'll see you next time. Take care.